Hi guys, welcome to So Janelle. I'm your host Janelle So, bringing you today to Los Angeles Fashion Week, powered by Art Hearts Fashion. We are here in downtown LA to give you a preview of the collection of Alexis Monsanto, a Filipino designer who is also going to have a bigger fashion show at an iconic restaurant here in Hollywood not too long from now, actually at the end of the month. You know, we've met Alexis before, we've featured him on the show, but we continue to support him. He has fashion, he has passion for fashion, but he also has a vision which is to use fashion to make a social impact. Here is Alexis Monsanto representing Filipinos in fashion. We are here at what they call Fashion Tech at The Hub. It's one of the events of the LA Fashion Week, it's powered by Art Hearts Fashion. We are here at the New Mart of downtown Los Angeles, just right across the California Mart in itself. And you showed a preview of some of your collection. I love the red, black, and white, but I know that you have more. You're working on something that's bigger and more. Tell us about it. I'm making a new, whole new collection of Autumn Winter 22. These are jewel colors, and I call it Jewels of Dreams. So the black and white and red recent uh, show that I just had here on stage was just like a snippet from a previous work, but um, they were Autumn Winter as well, and I just have to do a preview today to create excitement for the next two weeks. My inspiration is from actually the movie Knives Out and the Narnia. So picture this, the colors of the Knives Out and those things from the Narnia with the feathers, with the wings, with all of those. Right. There's a lot of like lettuce, like flowers. It's a lot of processes, laser cuts and um, 3D processing that I'm pioneering for this um, season. For how many years now? For almost 30 years. I've been here since I was in school and worked in the industry. How difficult or easy is it to be a Filipino designer in Los Angeles? Because there's a lot of designers, you know, and there's a lot of mainstream European, American designers. But uh, what's it like for you? What has your journey been? The journey has not been easy, but what I did is, I don't use my race card. I just use the best that I could be on my own terms. And plus, I guess, I thank, thank you, my dad, because my last name is Monsanto, and it's Italian sounding, so <laughs> I can get away with it. But um, it is just how I work. I'm so passionate about it. My designs, I work with different factories and labels, and it has propelled me to where I am today. So very mainstream work before I ventured on my own and the shop is in Melrose right now. Yes, and you design a lot for celebrities as well, right? And you have a solid clientele that go to you. Yes, I do have a solid clientele and some celebrities that I have dressed up with. Thank you. Um, the blessings is from above that I've been in the shop for more than 10 years. So that's a feat in itself, you know, and to stay on Melrose Avenue. What kind of statement are you making with your fashion? Well, the kind of statement is just less is more. And also, it's my fashion is always timeless. These dresses that I just recently showed, there were somewhere even like five years or somewhere last year. But I always reinvent them and restyled. So that's a challenge for a design. I'm not married to a certain look of a certain um, gown or something. 
I can always change it. And people will go crazy, even my assistants, they'll go crazy like, what, you already do, do this this way? Like, it's just amazing how my brain works and my creative skill and hands do. <laughs> That's the trend these days anyway, is sustainability. So when you do something, you're able to just work with the same stuff and recreate it. To add stuff, yeah. So add minus, like restyle, you know, and all those things. Right. Innovation. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if, like, for example, if you buy like a whole pieces for me, they could be interchangeable. The tops could be used in the other one and the bottom could be used in the other one and vice versa. Right, and that's big right now, especially in fashion, is fashion sustainability, right? What would be your advice to, you know, aspiring designers out there? You know, there's a lot of Filipinos who are very creative. My advice is know what you sell. You have to know your market as well. And important is design what, you, what sells, what to sell. Yeah. Right. Know the market. You cannot just like, do something and that's because you like it of course it's your baby it's your design it's you're an artist you know but it doesn't have a commercial impact or it's not wearable it doesn't make sense right. when you make you when you be a designer you're a successful designer you have to be a good entrepreneur also a successful entrepreneur I've interviewed you before um, for your fashion show and all that stuff. I remember when I first met you years ago, and now here we are years later, we're still friends, you're still designing, and you're thriving. But I know that you've changed, because you know we all change as the years go by. How have you changed? How has the Alexis Monsanto from before changed up to now? I put a lot of like online commerce. I joined into that. So I have the Shopify store, so that's a good change, you know. I sell, I went into also home fragrance because I have the brand and the brand is being built so I can do home fragrance and little accessories. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good change for me. Not just doing some couture and custom stuff, but I have products that can cater from home fragrance like candles. I have four um, scents. I have silk robes and I have the Nomad scarf that used to be featured in Oprah in 2011. So I had it brought back. And you're designing clothes for women? Yes. Why? Why women? I just want to give joy to every woman in this world. Um, just to give them satisfaction with fashion that they feel stylish and they feel grand about it. They feel pleased. What do you want women to feel when they wear your creations? I want women to feel like they are a million. Either they could be a princess if they're young girls. They could be a powerful woman in the boardroom with my suits. They're sexy, but never gosh. There's gonna be, there's blingy, but they're not overpowering you, like, you know. But less. So what do you think is the power of a woman? Every household, a woman is always has a role. Uh, just like a successful husband, there's always a woman behind it. So that's, the woman has a power, you know, to run her own house rules that will give the husband to shine more, to be, to be the best on his colleagues at work, on his peers. There's always a woman behind it. Because at the end of the day, the husband slips down with the woman and they talk on the bed. This is my this is my experience today. And the woman always has an opinion to give that. Then the husband can reflect and can come back tomorrow at work. I will make this decision for this particular employee or something. That's what I have to do. So the woman is a really good influence and that's an empowerment already. That's a power. Right. The next two weeks your show is at the Yamashiro on March 30th in Hollywood Hills. And this benefits Project Angel Food. And they do a really great job feeding people, providing meals for the sick and the underprivileged. And I love that you're using fashion to create social impact through Project Angel Food. Yes, because, you know, fashion is always like you get in arriving in style and, and as well as giving. Giving is style. 